But here we're down to Yellowstone Lake. You simply can't avoid this lake. It has a hundred miles of shoreline all inside the park. The largest high-level lake in America, 7,730 feet elevation, home of the famous cutthroat trout. So Yellowstone Lake historically had the largest population of Yellowstone cutthroat in North America. Uh, an incredible fish species, a keystone species uh, that had benefit to many other animals in the ecosystem. In 1994, uh, the park found that an angler, a recreational fisherman, brought a lake trout uh, to one of our rangers, uh, which shocked us. Uh, lake trout are not native to Yellowstone Lake. Since the uh, discovery of that fish, we found an incredible decline in the number of Yellowstone cutthroat trout in the lake, and we found that the number of lake trout have gone up uh, dramatically. Unfortunately, lake trout, especially lake trout when they become large, uh, are piscivorous, meaning that they eat other fish. And what we found is that lake trout are eating Yellowstone cutthroat trout, and uh, they're forming a, a negative factor that has caused the Yellowstone cutthroat trout to decline in numbers. We don't exactly know the decline of the population. We didn't have a good population estimate to begin with. What we do know, if we look at some of the spawning streams around the lake, that there have been very dramatic declines in the number of fish going up into those spawning streams. For example, on the lake's eastern shoreline, there's a creek called Clear Creek, which we've used uh, data from as a sentinel site, an indicator of the overall health of the Yellowstone cutthroat trout population in Yellowstone Lake. And there were years in which it was not uncommon to have 20 to 50 to even up to 70,000 fish traveling upstream to spawn in Clear Creek. And over the last decade, since the introduction uh, of lake trout to this lake, uh, we've seen uh, perhaps a hundred or just a few hundred fish going upstream versus tens of thousands. If you look at uh, metrics related to angler catch rates, meaning the number of fish that recreational fishermen are catching, we've also found that those rates have plummeted since the discovery of lake trout in the lake. In other words, fishermen are fishing a lot longer just to catch a few Yellowstone cutthroat trout, whereas historically the fishing was fantastic. Today we were on the lake uh, in the southeast arm of Yellowstone Lake, which is a magnificent uh, wilderness location. I remember seeing the fire scars from the 88 fires, bald eagles, a uh, variety of, of native birds. And uh, there are a number of factors that naturally and non-naturally affect Yellowstone cutthroat trout. We have climate change, we have drought that can affect spawning in the uh, streams surrounding the lake, uh, water temperatures, and then a non-native disease called whirling disease. All of those factors have affected the Yellowstone cutthroat trout population over many years. However, predation, uh, the consumption of Yellowstone cutthroat trout by lake trout, uh, is one of the factors that many scientists believe have tipped the scales, put the Yellowstone cutthroat trout population over the edge into a state of decline. The loss of Yellowstone cutthroat trout is not only important for the biodiversity in this park and uh, the conservation of that species. Again, Yellowstone Lake is a stronghold for that species uh, in the western U.S. Uh, but those fish are keystone species. And what that means is they have a disproportionately large effect on the rest of the ecosystem. In short, they're food for other animals. It turns out they were a very important food source for grizzly bears, uh, other species of bears like black bears, otters, eagles, and ospreys which eat fish. And we've seen a large uh, cascading impact of the decline of Yellowstone cutthroat trout on those species as well. So uh, back uh, in the uh, mid 80s and, and early 90s it was not uncommon to have several dozen osprey nests surrounding Yellowstone Lake. 
And since the introduction of lake trout and the decline in Yellowstone cutthroat trout, we now typically see more like half a dozen nests around the lake. So there's been a very dramatic decline there. Additionally, in the springtime, when Yellowstone cutthroat trout swam upstream to spawn, uh, bears, just like they do in Alaska on salmon spawning streams, would follow suit, capture those fish, and uh, put on a lot of fat and, and gain a lot of calories from that protein and fat source. And since uh, the number of Yellowstone cutthroat trout have declined in these spawning streams, we rarely, if ever, see bears feeding in these locations. Uh, some recent science indicates that there have been some further cascading effects than just bears not being able to eat Yellowstone cutthroat trout. Uh, scientists from Yale and the University of Wyoming have shown that bears, grizzly bears in particular, that used to eat Yellowstone cutthroat trout have now switched to another protein source and those are uh, juvenile elk, elk calves and uh, there's uh, clearly a, a number of repercussions of that, uh, especially when you look at uh, hunters outside the park that are interested in harvesting elk, a very important uh, species uh, for sportsmen. So we began netting uh, back in the, in the late 90s and through the early 2000s. As we collected more and more data and we saw that the lake trout population was continuing to grow, that Yellowstone cutthroat trout were not recovering quickly, and that the cascading impacts were particularly uh, acute for a number of species such as grizzly bears uh, and ospreys, we decided that it was important from an ecological restoration standpoint to control lake trout and try to restore Yellowstone cutthroat trout. So we realized quickly uh, on a lake like Yellowstone Lake, which is 130 square miles, up to 400 feet deep, uh, hard to access other than a few boat ramps, that we were going to need professional help when it came to controlling lake trout. Uh, so we put out a request for proposals through the contracting uh, world and we brought in the Hickey Brothers from the Great Lakes. The Hickey Brothers have spent generations fishing on the Great Lakes uh, for uh, uh, commercially important species there. And these are experts when it comes to being able to find fish and catch fish efficiently. Uh, so we've asked them to do what they already knew how to do very well, but we've asked them to do it even better to help us try to uh, collapse the lake trout population in Yellowstone Lake. But some of the things, they definitely taught us a better way to do it based on their, you know, three generations of fishing in the Great Lakes. Yeah. We know more about where the fish are than we know how to catch them. Yeah. And uh, when we captured some of the lake trout in the gillnet on uh, the Park Service boat today, the larger lake trout, including some of these fish, which were a good two feet long, uh, many of them had juvenile Yellowstone cutthroat trout in their stomach. And the fish sizes range from just a few inches all the way up to about nine or 10 inches. Uh, our hope is that after a five to ten year effort, when we begin to uh, significantly reduce the population, that we can go into a control effort that we would call a maintenance mode. In other words, we can put a small amount of gill netting effort out there to take a population that we uh, brought down to a low level and keep it there. Education is probably one of the best things that we have to help get the message out regarding the importance of this project. Uh, whether you're an angler on Yellowstone Lake that may occasionally catch a lake trout uh, that we're, re require you to remove from the lake, uh, or you're simply somebody that's interested in this, uh, uh, this fascinating, uh, cascading um, ecological disaster that we're seeing in the lake, the most important thing is to get the science out to educate folks on the impacts of non-native species on native ecosystems. There are numerous examples uh, around the world in which native species were either intentionally uh, or unintentionally impacted by the introduction of non-native species. Uh, 
we can use this as a lesson to be very careful about the way we manage native ecosystems, to be sure that we don't introduce non-native species into places where they have a high potential to impact native species. Yes, it's cer certainly my hope that uh, sometime in my lifetime, and certainly in my children's lifetime, uh, that Yellowstone cutthroat trout will be able to restore themselves uh, based on the program that we're implementing to control lake trout.